Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series and in today's video we're going to be continuing on with our project and our inventory system and what we're going to be doing specifically is we're going to be continuing on with our inventory and setting up the discard feature for our inventory. So what that's going to allow us to do is we're going to be creating a button whereby once you click that button you know or that object in your inventory it's going to throw it out of the inventory and back into the game. So it's going to spawn the object in the scene and it's going to remove the item from your inventory. It's quite a lengthy process just you know sit back relax and just follow along. Don't be too scared away just follow, uh, just follow along try do your best just copy what I'm doing and try to understand what I'm saying. If you have any questions feel free to let me know in the comments down below and I'll always try and get get back to you as soon as possible. Anyway if, you, if you're not up to date with the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series, I definitely advise you go ahead and check out the previous video using the thumbnail in the top left hand corner of the screen. Also, if you haven't seen the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series, I also advise you go ahead and check that out so you can easily follow along and understand. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you remember, everything for our HUD is going to be in our survival HUD widget class. So let's go ahead and open that up. Now one thing we need to do before we go any further is we need to do some things for these buttons. We need to make them invisible and we need to give them names so we can easily reference them. So and we also need to anchor them because at the moment they're slightly offset because the anchor isn't set up the same as the actual images. So let's go ahead and do that. So first things first I'm going to anchor these all, all to the bottom center just like that. And hopefully this should make them stay in the same place as the images. So let's go ahead and check, compile, play, and there we go, that's perfect. And when we press control now, and I go down to press them, they're all working perfectly fine. So the next thing we need to do is set them to invisible and give them names. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, give them names. Just click the button you want to work with and then go to the details in the top right and then just set it here. So what I'm going to call the first one is invent btn1 and I'm going to do the same thing all the way from 1 to 5 for each of the, two, each of the buttons. So I'm going to click the second one now and I'm going to set the name to button 2. I'm just copy and pasting it just to try and get it done as quickly as I can. So there you go. And that one's going to be number three. Number four. We're almost done here now. Sometimes things like this can be quite time consuming. It's definitely worth the wait. You know, it pays off so quickly. So there we go. So we got buttons one through five now. Now the next thing that I need to do is we need to make this uh, hidden. So Okay, so we don't need to make it hidden. We need to make this self hit, uh, self hit invisible. So what this is going to do is it's still the button's still going to work, but it's just not going to be seen by the player. And we've got to go ahead and do the same thing for each of these buttons here. Just go ahead and keep going on and on and on, just like that. Easy peasy. Compile, and now hopefully it should be invisible. So it doesn't seem to be invisible. Uh, let me just go ahead and check. Okay, no, so they're not invisible. So let's go ahead and change that again. Open up your survival HUD widget. Just set that back to normal, uh, to visible. And we're gonna change the visibility another way. So visible, 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 and visible. And the way we're gonna do this is we're just gonna go to color and opacity and we're just gonna set the alpha down to zero just like that, so 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, and we're going to go down to style and make sure we do the same thing as well. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue on. So we've also got to make sure we set the tint down to 0 as well, if we want to make it truly invisible, and we've got to do that for each uh, step of the way, for pressed, normal, hovered, and so on and so forth. Once we set the normal to uh, the normal down to zero, it should hopefully disappear. There we go. That's working perfectly fine for us. Now, just before I go ahead and do the same thing, we're going to set up a simple little test just to make sure that button is still working even though it is invisible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the button 
and I'm going to create an unclicked event. And with this unclicked event, I'm just going to quickly print a string. Don't worry about the stuff that's already attached. Uh, completely ignore that. It's just where I started working on some stuff before. I will be showing you how to create that later on. So now I've created the print string. It's just going to show me, you know, it's just going to print the string whenever I press that button. It's just my way of seeing the button still working. So when I go ahead and click it, you can see it's still pressing hello. So now we can actually add all the functionality, but the button's just not going to be seen. And all of our aesthetical stuff, the visual side of things, is going to be in the image below, and that is absolutely perfect. So what we need to do now is we just need to go ahead and do the same thing for each of those buttons. Now, I don't want to be doing that in this video as it's going to drag it on too much. It's quite a lengthy process. Just do the same thing. Set the tint to zero for everything. And make sure you also set the color and opacity to zero for all of these. So now that we've actually set up the on clicked event, we can actually add some functionality for spawning items into our scene. Now, the way we're going to do that is we need to spawn an actor into the world, but we need to change which actor based on the inventory slot item. Now, if you remember inside of our third person character, we've got a slot for item one, two, three, four, five, etc. And we also have a word document with all the IDs and stuff. We pretty much need to bring all of that together and actually, you know, start spawning items into the world based on the slot in there. And then we also need to pretty much empty out the slot as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast to the third person character or you know your character player character whatever you've called it but the reason why i'm doing this is because i actually want to be able to communicate to the character because it has all of the inventory information inside of it and once again as the object wildcard just type in get actor uh no get player character and now hopefully we should be able to get all of the information we need now because we're actually working with the first button we only need to be working with the first slot here. So what I'm going to do as the third person character, I'm going to get slot one item. And we're going to have to do this whole blueprint for each of these slots, uh, each of these slots and each of these buttons. So you can pretty much copy the script from the first slot to the second slot, third slot, fourth slot. And all you're going to have to do is pretty much just change the variable here from slot one through to slot five. So the next thing we need to do now then is switch on int and then we've got to hook up slot one item into our selection and what this switch on int is going to do is it's essentially going to pretty much change the item that is spawned based on you know the number or the value of slot one item. Now if you remember we have a word document with all of our different IDs. But if I'm correct, I remember we worked with wood, you know, our wood item or our logs item, and that was just number one. So we're just going to set up the functionality for number one, and then later on we'll start adding in all of the different items. So for that, you just add in a, a different pin, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So I'm going to quickly open up that document, which should be somewhere on my desktop. Didn't want to show that because I've probably got some stuff on there I shouldn't. So you can see I've got my wood, I've got my key, I've got my tinder box. You know, you're just going to have the different pins uh, for all of those. Zero is going to it's going to be empty. It's going to do nothing because you know there's nothing to throw out of the inventory. One is going to be our wood. Our key is going to be number two, and so on. So let's go ahead and set up our wood pickup. We're just going to do this one for now, and we're going to have to hook up the print string. Uh, print string or something like that just to the default to say uh, did not work just to make sure everything works and it compiles all good but let's spawn in the actor for our wood so the way we're going to do that is we're going to right click anywhere and type in spawn actor from class and this is going to allow us to spawn into the game a blueprint class now we're going to be using the same blueprint class that we created for the pickups earlier so if you remember the ones that have already got all the functionality for picking it up and stuff, it's going to be the same thing. So if the player wants to pick up the item again, they can do and it's going to work absolutely great. So let's go ahead and hook up the spawn actor for wood to and set that class to wood. 
there we are just like that now you just use different nodes for number two for the key and you just change the class and that's it now we've got a few things we need to do to this so we've set the class but we also need to change the transform and this transform is going to essentially allow us to spawn at well you know change how it looks in terms of scale rotation and uh, location inside of the game so we got to set up a few things for that so let's go ahead and do that and I'm going to try and explain all of this the, as best I can so what I'm going to do is first things first I need to make a transform and this is essentially just going to allow us to bring a whole bunch of different information together and then just return it out to this little actor here so the first thing I'm going to do is, because the scale is okay, I'm going to leave it all to 1. And we need to get the actor location, uh, not the actor location, the actor rotation. The rotation we're going to keep as the same as the player. So what I need to do is I need to get the player controller. And I'm just going to get the actor rotation from that and I'm going to hook it straight up to rotation. Now it's the location that's going to be the harder part because we need to, we actually need to make it spawn slightly in front of the player so we need to set up some kind of system for a offset you know to make it spawn in front. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to drag out location and I'm going to type in vector plus vector and once I've done that we need to start hooking up a few things in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is rotate vector, rotate vector just like that and I'm going to hook that up just like this and the top one here we're going to get the actor location now and the actor location this time we're just going to get it from the player character so get actor location and we're just going to hook this up just like that. So we're going to get the actor location and we're going to add it to some rotation stuff as well. So from here, we're going to use get actor lo rotation again. There you are. And I'm just going to drag it out just to make it look a little bit easier to understand. And the last thing that we actually need to do is we actually need to set up a offset now so it spawns in front of the player. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to create a new variable with the type vector. And I'm just going to compile it. And the reason why I'm taking, I'm creating a variable is so that it can be referenced and used over and over and over again. And I'm just going to set some pretty low values in here. So 500 on the x axis, 100 on the y, or 50 on the y even, and then 50 on the z as well. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to press compile and hopefully it should all work. So I'm going to press control so I can actually start discarding items and I can see my mouse I'm gonna press it and hopefully it should have spawned an item in the scene so I can't see it spawning anything at the moment there's probably a reason for that okay so Okay, so I figured out the reason why it wasn't showing up. It's because I actually forgot to add in the projectile offset. Well, not the projectile offset, but the pickup offset. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to bring over my class here, drag it in, because we got our values now. And I'm going to get, and I'm going to hook it up just like that. And I'm going to compile it. I'm going to give this a name real quick, and I'm going to name this uh, pickup offset. And I'm going to compile. And I'm going to close this out now and press play and hopefully this should start working. Because I don't have an item in there already, I need to pick up some wood first. And now if I go ahead and click it, it should be spawning in the scene. But there is one piece of problem that we are going to have here and that is that it's going to pick up the item straight away. We need to set up some conditioning so it doesn't pick up straight away but I'm going to leave that for the next video. All we need to do is just pretty much set up a branch in the pickup so that it can't be picked up within the first few seconds and then from there you'll start to see it appear and you can pick it up only after a few seconds. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to do for this video. Like I said, make sure you go through all of the buttons, set the visibility to, you know, being invisible, and make sure that you, you know, 
create all your pickup items and all of that. Anyway, thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.